15 years ago, Liquibase started as an open source project to help you manage database schema change. But what about the database itself and the data? Can we find a way to version the entire database? Can we apply what we have learned from Git to the database? Liquibase, both the company and our amazing open source community, has done exactly that. We have created Liquibase data to bring versioning to any database. With Liquibase data, you can apply the same Git workflow you use every day for your code to your database. Commands like commit, log, push, pull, and many more work exactly as you would expect. Liquibase data brings sanity and simplicity to database development. Let me show you how it works. Before we start using Liquibase data, we need to install it. So here we have our GitHub page, github.com slash liquibase slash liquibase dash data. And this is where you can download liquibase data. Um, we have a whole bunch of great information here, uh, documentation on how to use liquibase data. We also have a tutorial that will not only walk you through the installation and setup process, but also some pretty handy use cases, um, for example, around team collaboration, sharing data sets amongst team members. Uh, for this example today, we're just going to show Liquibase data working on a single machine. So let's go to our command prompt. And I have Liquibase installed. I have Liquibase data installed. And let's look at our Liquibase.properties file. Uh, we have our usual suspects here, driver, URL, username, password. Today I'm using a changelog in an XML format. If you'd like, you could use YAML, JSON, formatted SQL, just need to change the extension. Uh, for Liquibase veterans, you might notice a new key value pair here, and that is repository. Uh, this is the name of the repository that I'm going to be creating and using today. Uh, this is a convenience function, um, saves you uh, from having to type the repository name um, all the time. So the first thing we're going to do now that we have this set up is I'm going to start a database from within Liquibase. Uh, you'll notice this looks very similar to Docker um, because that's what it's doing. It's starting a Docker container. Uh, the image is Postgres, passing in an environment variable. And it's also creating the repository in Liquibase data for me. So the database is up and running now. Let's go look at it in our database IDE. So we'll go to dBeaver and I am going to create a new connection. We are using Postgres. And the defaults will be just fine. Just need to put in my password. And let's go ahead and look around. Uh, we'll see that we have our Postgres database. We'll see that we have our public schema and no tables. Well, that's to be expected. Uh, this is a new database, new Docker container running Postgres. This would be a good time to do our first commit. Um, now, if you're wondering why I'm looking to the left here, that is because that is where all my notes are. Uh, so we'll go back to the command prompt and Liquibase data commit. We'll have a message. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that looks very similar to Git. Um, another similarity is Liquibase data log. Let's go ahead and look at all of our changes. And this is going to um, show us that there is only one commit. All right, great. Now, the whole point of versioning is to keep track of changes over time. So I should probably make a change to this database. Now, the easiest way I know to change a database is with Liquibase. Um, now, I'm going to use a shortcut here to generate my changelog. Now, this changelog is going to be empty because the database is as well. Um, of course, if you pointed this at a database that already had objects created, it would reverse engineer those and create the changelog file with those objects inside. Uh, so let's go to our text editor and we will open our changelog file. Ooh. 
And let me go ahead and open up this XML tag. Alrighty. And over in my notes, I have a change set already created. Now I'm using a structured change set, but you can point to a SQL file if you'd like, or an entire directory of SQL files. Not a problem. However you want to work is fine by Liquibase. And so this change set is creating a customer, a table named customer with four columns. Um, I've saved it. And now I need to update, Liquibase update, the database. Now it's asking me for my email address for Liquibase Hub. Liquibase Hub is a service that stores all operations that Liquibase has performed, um, status or reporting, uh, for other, te other team members to be able to see what changes have been made to the database. For this example, we're gonna go ahead and skip over this, but Liquibase Hub is really cool, really free, and you should check it out. Um, so we've made our update. Now let's go to dBeaver and see our change. All righty, so there's our customer table, there's our columns, wonderful. Uh, and we also see the two meta tables that Liquibase requires. It created that for us, wonderful. Now that I've made a change, um, I should probably do another commit. And so we'll go back to the command prompt we will do a commit with a new message. Okay, now let's check out the log and we should see our two commits there. Okay, so here is the second one. Here is the first one. All right, wonderful. Now, of course, one of the reasons why you want to version things is so that you can get back to a previous version. And the way you do that with Liquibase data is with checkout. And so let's go ahead and copy this. And here is our first commit. This is the commit ID that I'm going to use. Alrighty. Now, remember this was before I created the customer table and before I ran Liquibase. So if I go to dBeaver, I should expect that those um, customer tables gone alongside the Liquibase meta tables. Uh, and so we'll select tables and hit refresh and they're gone. Wow, okay. Well, it turns out, you know, I was okay with that customer table. Um, so let's go back to that. Um, again, uh, we're going to go to Liquibase data log to get my commit ID. And we are going to do another checkout. This time with a different commit ID. And so here is the commit ID for created the new table. And once this is done, we should see those three tables that we had previously in dBeaver. There they are. Now keep in mind that this is, you know, we're storing tables and those sorts of things, but if there was data in there, guess what? Liquibase data would version that as well. And that's pretty awesome.